But the main brush that I use is, um, let's see, I have to make another layer here because I lost my spot. Um, what I mainly use is this one right here. Now you see there's no taper at the end. But what I'm going to do is alter this brush a little bit. I'm going to increase up to like really big. Let's do 440. That's fine. Okay. And then go to uh, brush tip shape and lower the spacing down to about seven or six percent. So we don't we don't want it to chug. So that's why I only do it to six percent. Um, now I want to save that brush out. So I click the down arrow here and say new brush preset. Okay, looks good. Press B. Got my brushes. And there you go. It's a smooth brush. It might not look smooth on this video, uh, depending on the color compression, but uh, trust me, it comes out really smooth. Okay, so I was just looking at the last video I put together and uh, noticed that some of the colors are coming out less than ideal. Uh, so I apologize if anything looks uh, really um, uh, saturated or uh, muddled, uh, but with these screen capture things you can only do so much. So anyway, on to the next brush. Um, this next brush is um, a little more, I guess, kind of traditional style or more uh, traditional medium and it's great for using uh, for making uh, textures and hair and it's pretty much you can use it for just about anything if you want that real painterly look to your drawing all right so what we're gonna do first is create a new layer and we're gonna draw a couple spots let me get my color picker on screen all right so we're gonna grab black and just pick out any old brush here and just make a couple spots. Let's see, let's zoom up here. Actually, I'm going to turn the flow down a little bit. It's a little too sharp. There you go. Okay, so we're just going to make a couple spots like this. Varying in size. Overall, kind of round. All right, I think that should. It's probably too many. Let me erase a couple. All right, so now we just select Control A, select it all, press Control C, and press Control N for new, and get this window. Press OK. Okay, now I'm going to paste the the shape I just made in that window, and then turn off the background, and I'm going to select it all, Control A, and go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. All right and you're going to get this window. Press OK. Now we're going to go back to the original uh, blank canvas we had here, or this canvas. Delete that. Press B and I'm going to pick, that's my new brush right there. So it looks like this right now. Great for freckles and spots and stuff, but what we want to do is turn, turn this thing into uh, a brush that creates like hair strands. So we're going to go to um, Shape Dynamics, click that, and see automatically right away you see this taper on the edges. And we're going to hit uh, Other Dynamics so that will allow uh, Fade. And then we're going to go back to where uh, the brush tip shape, and that's um, what we used before to correct the spacing. We're going to knock the spacing down really low to like 5 or 6%. Um, that should be good. Um, so now we're going to save it out. So hit the down arrow. And press new brush preset. Press OK. Alright, so now I'm going to grab this new brush right there. Now watch this. Creates strands. Um, one, th uh, one thing with this brush is it works better smaller. So that I made it pretty big, so I'm going to shrink it down. And we're going to fill in a background color so we have something to work off of. Uh, I'm going to get like a kind of a gray blue. And press G to fill it in. So we got this blue color and start a new layer on top of that and I'll get maybe a make it like dark brown hair or something so we'll get kind of a brown reddish color and we'll lay down the base so just real quick okay now here's where it gets cool uh, I'm gonna knock down the size a little bit more probably about right there and pick a color above that so let's get like a orangey yellow brown like color and make a new layer above. 
So now you can put down hair strands. And I think this brush is great for not just hair, but um, also just adding texture to your brush strokes because a lot of a lot of uh, brushes that you make or have in Photoshop they come out really smooth and smooth is cool for certain surfaces but sometimes it just makes it look too airbrushy and you get, it, it looks cheap so it cheapens the quality so there you go that's one of my favorite brushes and it's also awesome for making plants uh, I'm gonna uh, show you an example all right, so what we're going to do first, and I'm guilty of this, uh, for uh, I'm guilty of not doing this constantly, not labeling my layers. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, keep ourselves organized, uh, add a new folder, and change that to plant. There we go. And then I'm just going to recycle these old layers, rename them, uh, name the bottom one one, and the the top one two. Put both of those layers inside the folder, and then. Uh, on the bottom one, I'm going to pick my darker color. Actually, let's let's turn the canvas to a, a bit of a darker blue so we can really have this thing pop off the canvas. Um, let's see, hit G and then go to a darker color than what we have. There we go. Alright, so back to layer one, this number one here. And I'm going to pick a dark green, which will be our lowest value uh, color for our plant. And I add a little blue to it. There we go. All right, so I'm going to lay down the base. And what I'm just doing is kind of, you can tap the screen like this. Let me zoom up a little bit. And turn the flow up a little bit because I want it a little bit sharper. So I'm going to tap the screen. Maybe kind of scribble a little bit. I'm starting to get the outside of a plant shape. All right, and now go to layer two. Pick a higher value, maybe a little bit warmer. Add some uh, yellow or orange to it. Now watch, this is cool. You just tap. There you go. You're starting to get a little shrub. Just like that. So, you can see how this could be very useful for making lots of trees very quickly. Uh, you know, you can fill in big areas like this. See how it's going under my highlight so I don't mess with the top layer. And you can crank out full-on trees very quickly, especially if they're in the background. I mean, not you know, you don't have to spend too much. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be spending too much time on trees that are just hanging out in the background. There you go. Cool. So next brush. Uh, this one is really cool. Um, it's a great shortcut for for making uh, basically. Well, chains, chains of any kind of pattern, but I'm actually going to make a chain link chain. It's also good for making barbed wire, also like with vines and leaves on it if you're just trying to make some kind of patterned line. So uh, let's see, let's start up a new uh, uh, canvas, Control N, press OK, and let's draw in a very basic black and white chain link. You got your background here, I'm going to make a new layer. So layer one, get a different brush. We're going to get that 440 brush we made before. And I'm going to draw on a very simple chain link. Now, some some people say, oh, this is cheating, you know. <laughs> You're not drawing in all the things. But, you know, when you have a client and you, you have a, a deadline or something, you got to, instead of drawing every single chain link in on something, you can just use this brush. And you're making this brush anyway, so... It's not like it's not your work. All right. So we got a very simple uh, front view of a chain link and the side view of a chain link. And I'm going to copy that. Control A, Control C, Control N, Enter, Control V. So I just paste it into a new uh, canvas. And I'm going to turn off the background. S go back to my layer one, uh, hit Control A select it all and go to edit define brush preset so there's our shape press ok and then we're going to go back to our untitled image here I'm going to turn off this uh, dark color so we can see the chain in action uh, I'm going to create a new layer hit B I got my brush selected I'm going to check uh, click the or click on the chain link now it's really big right here I'm going to zoom out yeah I'm going to tone down the size on this thing. There we go. 
Okay, so right now it looks like that. It looks really bad. It doesn't work. So what we have to do is go to our hit F5 and bring up your brush presets menu. And what you're going to do is hit uh, Shape Dynamics. And you're going to hit, uh, and that should be uh, set on size jitter to zero, minimum diameter, wherever, maybe, you know, uh, let's go to like 15. And then we're going to go to um, other dynamics. Or actually, no, forget the other dynamics. That's for opacity. We don't want to do that to this one. Uh, let's go to brush tip shape. Uh, let's space out the chain links so you can see them individually. See how they're separating? And then you're going to go to this uh, wheel over here and rotate the angle so that the chain links match up like that. The other main point, uh, the other main thing to click is, um, I think it's under shape dynamics. Yeah, angle jitter. You want to turn that to direction. So hit direction. I shifted it a little bit. So I'm going to go back, make sure this is lined up just right. Space it out a little bit more if you have to. All right, now. I'm going to hit save on this, new brush preset. There we go. Okay. Back to my canvas, and I'm going to pull up the brush menu. There's my new brush. Now watch this. This is pretty sweet. Got a chain brush. This saves a ton of time. It, and it, it, as you can see, you can do thick to thin, and it, it allows you to uh, put in some uh, really cool patterns very quickly without you having to worry about drawing a chain link and chain link and chain link again. So, uh, I think there's one more brush I'm going to go over. Um, this is actually more of a, a stamp. You can use things, you can make stamps uh, out of uh, the brush preset um, editor. So what you do is just you take a lasso, and I got a picture of a random rock image I found on the internet. I'm going to hit Control shift u to desaturate it. And then I'm going to pick out an area which I think looks cool, or like a shape that I like. So I'm just going to go around real quick, just to show you guys how this works. Selecting a chunk of this rock. There we go. Okay, Control C. Hit Control N for a new one. Enter. Control V. Paste it. Now normally I would go in and um, let me get a better, get my new brush. Here's that brush. Normally I would go in and kind of rough up the edges like this. So it's not too perfectly cut. All right? Something like that. Then uh, you take the you turn off the background, hit control A and make sure you have your rock layer selected and then go to edit and again just hit uh, define brush preset and press OK. So now let's go back to our canvas we were working on. Now watch when I hit B pull up the brush, pick out the new one, you got a rock stamp. And now it looks kind of cheesy right now, but if you go, if you mess with the, uh, the color dynamic or the other dynamics and turn down the opacity on it, you turn on some scattering, turn scattering on and move uh, the count and play around with that for a while and then go to um, shape dynamics and you can mess with the angle and minimum diameter. Um, you can also go to brush tip shape and go to uh, space it out a little bit more um, and then you can also uh, mess with the uh, roundness to it so you can make it thinner if you need to. Let's go back to shape dynamics and uh, I'm going to turn the roundness jitter on to like oh, crank it all the way up and I'm going to move this down so we have a good variety of roundness variation. So what this does, I'm going to save this out um, new brush preset Okay. So now we have this brush and it, it puts down random chunks of rock. So what that allow you to do is you can throw this random like lines down and you can find shapes that you normally wouldn't think of up by yourself. So what you can you can ulti what you can do is find terrain that uh, you normally wouldn't be able to figure out. So from this, there you go. Okay, this is great. So what I could do with this is now go in, let's turn on my background layer, and we can pop shapes out of the scene. I'm going to hi highlight color, and I'm going to grab that new brush we made, the hairbrush. And just, you can go in there and add like, 